This is going to be a very quick tutorial where I show you every single thing that I do in Blender before hitting render. That helps me render all my projects in just a few seconds without having to remember a hundred different settings. Let's start with this simple scene from one of my client projects. Now make sure you're in cycles. So change the render engine to cycles and this is the default setting. So every single thing here is the default, how Blender comes by default. So without changing anything, let me hit render. Nope. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> this is showing me two hours, 38 minutes. That's crazy. For me to wait for two hours and 38 minutes to render just one frame. Just one frame. And for this two seconds clip, that would take me like five days. <laughs> so no, we are not doing this. These are the steps I take to go from two hours, 30 minutes to just a minute or two. So let's stop this render. The first thing to think about is your GPU. Does your PC have a GPU? If it does, you are super lucky because it usually renders a lot faster than the CPU. So I have a GPU. I'm running on a laptop with an RTX 2080. So the first thing I need to do is to change my device from CPU to GPU. Make sure you go to the render properties. Change the device from CPU to GPU. And now we don't just stop there. Go to edit preferences system and change your cycles render devices here now by default it sets it to none but depending on your gpu so if you have a gtx card an nvidia gtx choose cuda if you have an rtx card like i do 2080 3090 4090 all of that use optics because this is optimized for rtx cards this CUDA is optimized for older cards, older NVIDIA cards. HIP is optimized for AMD cards. If you have some kind of AMD based GPU, use that. And One API is optimized for Intel GPUs. If you are running some new Intel GPU, it's better to use this. So I'm going to choose Optics because I have a GPU and it's an NVIDIA RTX. So just hit Save Preferences. And now that's the first thing. Then the next thing I do is to increase threshold. This threshold is 0.01. Increase this to something like 0.1 or even 0.9 or 0.5 or something. Usually I use something like 0.2 or 0.5. So from 0.01 to 0.2. And something that is very important is the noise. Make sure the noise is checked. I think it's checked by default, but if it isn't, check the noise and make sure you have open image denoiser, albedo and normal and accurate cool i think that's it by default now because when you render like this without denoising it's going to have a lot of noise but the denoising has gotten super smart it's good enough to take your very noisy render and make it look good and complete the entire spaces in between to make it look nice yeah i know some people advise you to double your resolution but that's up to you that is up to you so if i go to output properties and change this to 4k instead of 1080p that's increases my resolution but it also increases my render time the thing is it depends on you you should make your comparison render with 1080p and render with 4k the tiny detail difference if it's worth it to you go for it most of the time it's not worth it to me so if you have the time to render it in 4k do that but if you don't it's also cool so let's leave it at 1080p we'll do a comparison at the end and that's it that's pretty much it i told you this is going to be a short tutorial some people talk about light parts and max bounces i don't mess with any of these things you can mess with it if you want you can change everything to two or eight or four or something reduce it from 12. you can do that but I, I don't need to do it you can test that on your specific scene for your specific project to see if it actually helps but for me they usually have a little difference yeah for motion blur if i want my animations to look realistic i add motion blur but if i have some shots where things are moving super fast especially product shots and i need to see each individual product i see a lot of people make this kind of mistake when you're having products flying all around and everything is hard to keep track of shots like this you need to turn off motion blur and also adding motion blur increases your render time so this is not the most optimized way to do it so that's basically what i do when i'm rendering pretty much every single project now if i hit render for the second time remember it was showing two hours 38 minutes now it's showing less than 20 seconds oh my god seconds and we can compare the images to see how much changes were made 
so it's up to you to determine if these changes are worth it or not for me it's completely worth it so that's it guys if you're a beginner and you're just coming to blender space and you just render blender default settings now i really saved you a lot of time i hope this has been valuable to you especially if you have been struggling with rendering your animation for hours and hours please drop a like on the video i know we say this every time but it actually helps i'll see you in the next video